The three-day revival in the USA with wise men Harry in the ministry of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Not only is God using TB Joshua, but also wise men Harry, wise men Rasid, wise men John Chi, wise men Daniel, and wise men Christopher. Get ready to watch the real, authentic, and forceful power of God as read about in the book of Acts. Jesus Christ still empowers His disciples to change the world. Who is worthy of our affection? Who is worthy of our faith? Who is worthy of our dreams, hopes, and future? Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive the power, wealth, honor, glory, and praise. In the ministry of the Synagogue Church of Ordinations, the wise men minister healing, deliverance, and prophecy in Jesus' name. You are married in the spirit. Who are you? Where is your husband? We have divorced men of God destroyed. I've divorced. Yes. I'm here to tell you that the best is yet to come. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm seeing you preaching the gospel. That's right, I'm preaching the gospel in South Africa where I'm coming from. There is a problem you have put upon yourself. Because I'm seeing you praying for people. That's right, that's I'm doing that as well. There is a spirit that is pursuing you now. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why must you touch my head? What's wrong with that? Who are you? Oh, you want to know me? Yes. You want to know me? We are many. You are many. Ah, Come out and I want you to know Jesus. This is Wise Man Racine ministering prayer for those who are sick in the prayer line of the Synagogue Church of Ordinations. Yeah, what brought me to the synagogue is that I have asthma, I have allergies, and I have a torn ligament in my right knee. Please, man of God, help me. I want to play rugby to glorify the Lord Jesus. You believe that Jesus Christ can heal you? Yes, sir. Can set you free? Yes, sir. Since you believe in Him, Jesus will heal you effectually. Yes, sir. For His glory. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are free. You are healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wise Man Rasin ministers prayer to Yaka de praise and he rises to his feet. A simple trial of Jesus' ability to fulfill his promise of healing in the life of Yaka de praise convinces him beyond all doubts as he immediately begins to demonstrate what he could not do before the prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. There is this spirit when it comes over you. There is nothing you cannot do. You think of killing yourself, you, you, you just think of leaving this world. Yes. Can I speak to you? Yes. yes. I am seeing a violent spirit in you, spirit of anger. Yes. There is this giant man that always comes to you. Anytime you sleep, he is very tall. He will come and have an affair with you. That's true. This is wise man Daniel ministering spiritual prayer to the people in Jesus' name. And whatever demonic spirits that Satan had used to hold the people in captivity are exposed. Who are you? Out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. It's the first night of the revival and thousands of people from the 50 states of the USA and beyond. The doors are officially opened for the first night of the revival in the USA with Wise Men Harry. Welcome to Revival in the USA. Woo! 
Put your hands together for Jesus. How many of you are happy to be in this place tonight? Wave your hands if you are happy. First of all, we want to welcome you to the United States. For those of you who are from another country, for those of you in, from other states, we want to welcome you to Washington State. A little bit chilly, but the fire of the Holy Spirit will keep us warm. Amen? Amen. 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 My name is Vladimir Savchuk, and I'm the youth pastor of Hungry Generation, a local church here that's organizing and helping to facilitate this event. And we welcome everybody. We also welcome the ministry of T.P. Joshua, Scone, and Emmanuel TV to the United States. You know, the sin is not territorial. Satan is not territorial. And God's grace is not territorial either. That's why American people can take the gospel and go to an African country and see a lot of African brothers and sisters receive Jesus. But today, a change has happened. Because the gospel is coming from there. And it's going to touch your life. It's going to touch my life. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Greetings from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel. Yes, Emmanuel means God is with us. And it is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 23. If God is with us, who can be against us? If God is with a nation, who can be against her? Tell your neighbor, God is with us. God is with the nation America. If God is with us, we will act on his behalf and know his opinion about ourselves and others. Amen. All protocols observed. A big thanks to the Good News Church. Hallelujah. The Hungry Generation, other ministries, and our teams from different countries, which include America, United Kingdom, Greece, France, Russia yeah. and Nigeria. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. My name is Wiseman Hari. By our fruits, they shall know us. Yeah. I don't need to tell you where we are coming from. Action speaks louder than words. Yeah. Everything today will be in the form of an introduction. Amen. I will start with a short message titled, The Most Charming Temptation. You may have your seat. Let somebody say, The Most Charming Temptation. Yes. We are here today because we want to know God's opinion about our situation. Amen. And there is no way to know God's opinion about our situation without God's word. So right now, your attention is needed. Tell your neighbor, your attention is needed. For you to receive the word of God in your heart, your attention is needed. If you give partial attention, you will get partial result. But if you give total attention, you will receive total result. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. In my experience in the church so far, I was privileged 
to observe different kinds of people. I have seen those who come to church because of material gain, those who come to church because of political gain, and those who come to church for the salvation of their soul. Let me give you a good example. Many people in the past, when they were looking for blessing or position, they were frontline members having enough time to spend in the church, fasting and praying. Today, they are blessed. Where are they? Today, they are given high positions. Where are they? They have no time to even listen to sermons and read the Bible with devotion, let alone fast and pray. This made me to understand that pleasure usually turns the mind of man, of his creator. Pleasure usually turns the mind of man, of his creator. Sooner or later, he begins to glorify his blessing rather than the giver of his blessing. This is what is affecting many of us today. Many of us have allowed wealth, fame, popularity, money, power, and authority to take our mind, our time, and our loyalty off our Creator. This means all high places are slippery places. Tell your neighbor, all high places are slippery places. The higher you go, the more the temptation. Yes, the most charming temptation. Our proof text shall be taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 3, and verses 16 to 17. Then we shall go to chapter 4, from verse 1 to verse 4, and from verse 8 to 11. This is all about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his encounter with the devil in the wilderness. Are you there? Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. It says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let's go to verse 8. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Praise God. I want you to picture yourself being baptized in a river. 
And suddenly, the heaven opens, and a voice from it declares concerning you, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is my daughter whom I love. With her I am well pleased. What a wonderful day that would be. Amen? Have you pictured yourself? If such manifestation were to happen to you, everyone there witnessing it would believe that, number one, you are the closest person to God, and two, they would believe that because of your closeness to God, you cannot be tempted. But going by the scripture we have just read, we understand that after the declaration of Jesus as the Son of God, the Savior of the world, he was tempted. This means no matter how close you are to Jesus, you can still be tempted. Tell your neighbor, no matter how close you are to Jesus, you can still be tempted. Take note, Jesus Christ did not go into the wilderness to tempt the devil, but he went there to be tempted. The Bible says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. There is a difference there. When we presume upon our own strength, and tempt the devil to tempt us, we provoke God to withdraw his power and leave us to our own power. The Bible says that Satan uses our situation to tempt us. What is your situation right now? Look at the case of Jesus. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Satan came to tempt him. Jesus Christ found himself in a situation of hunger. Imagine, fasting 40 days, 40 nights, he was very hungry. Knowing that Jesus was hungry, Satan tempted him with bread. Let me tell you about temptation. Temptation is the presentation of evil. It is the opportunity to choose temporary pleasure rather than permanent gain. Jesus Christ knew this. That was why he said to the tempter, man shall not live with bread alone. Meaning, I may be hungry, Satan, but I'm not desperate about food. There is an important lesson there. If Jesus Christ was desperate about food, he would have been tempted to put on a sensational display of power and turn the stones into bread, as suggested by the devil. Jesus was not desperate about food because the Savior knew that a man may want bread and yet be a candidate of heaven. A man may be poor and yet be a friend of God. If you look at the trouble you are facing today, it is as a result of being anxious of tomorrow. When you are anxious of tomorrow, you will not be able to differentiate between God's supplies and Satan's bait in the face of certain trying situations. Let us take a quick look at the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 27. In John 14, 27, Jesus Christ makes it clear 
that there are two sources in this life, God and Satan. The book of John chapter 14 and verse 27, it says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. This means the peace Christ gives is infinitely more valuable than that which the world gives. When Jesus said, peace I live with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives, he equally meant, my love I give you, not as the world gives. He equally meant, my joy I give you, not as the world gives. He equally meant, my blessing I give you, not as the world gives. This means that the world too can give you peace, love, joy, and blessings, but there are conditions attached to them. What are the conditions? Look at the way Satan tempted Jesus. He said to him, all the glory of the world I will give you. And you know what the glory of the world is all about. It includes wealth, fame, popularity, position, and the likes. Satan said to Jesus, all the glory of the world I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. Can you see the condition I'm talking about? Satan tempted Jesus to idolatry with offer of the kingdom of the world and the glory of it. If Jesus were to be the carnal type, he would have bowed down for Satan because the glory of the world is the most charming temptation to the carnally minded. Let somebody say, the glory of the world is the most charming temptation to the carnally minded. The society we are in today, many become wealthy in a twinkle of an eye. Such wealth is questionable. What do I mean by questionable? You see, in the world, we have what we call devil's sacrifice. When Satan gives you something that gives you apparent peace, when I say apparent peace, I mean something that looks like peace, but it is not peace. When Satan gives you something that gives you apparent peace with the right hand, he takes from you something your life depends on with the left hand. Let me give you a good example. When Satan knows that you are in need of money, he will make money available. Take note, it looks like money, but it is not money. That money cannot stand the test of time. The money will leave you and leave greater problem behind. You'll be very surprised that by the time you have the money, that is when people in your family will start complaining of sickness, joblessness, accidents, deaths, this, that, that. The money will finish and your condition will be worse than before. Brethren, as children of light, there is something you must know. Anything the children of light have, Satan has the counterfeit of them. We have the original grace, but Satan has the photocopy of it. In a nutshell, the blessing of the world is a fading thing. 
so is the life itself on which it is bestowed. As the blessing is fading away, so the life that carries it. What are you looking for in this life? What are you out for? Jesus' temptation shows that he was not out for material or political gain, but for the work of his heavenly Father. Therefore, as children of the Most High God, let us live for eternity, and we shall see that all is available in time. In other words, if you make God your heart's delight, you would have your heart's desire. Tell your neighbor, if you make God your heart's delight, you would have your heart's desire. Hallelujah. I believe you are blessed with this message. So let us come to the end of this message and attend to those who are in agony, those who are in pain, which is part of the reason why we are here today. Remember, Jesus still empowers his disciples to change the world today. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord.